The armored dinosaurs are perhaps the least understood major group of dinosaurs. A few patchwork transitional species and ancestral common ancestors are known that give an impression of how these animals evolve, but there are many gaps. Additionally, new lineages of armored dinosaurs are being discovered in weird parts of the world that indicate many completely unknown evolutionary directions taken by this group. So perhaps what little is known of the origins of the armored dinosaurs is not even standing on firm ground to begin with. The armored dinosaurs, the Thyreophora, can be taken back to early Jurassic aged forms such as Scutellosaurus, Emausaurus, and Scalidosaurus. However, it remains unclear if these most primitive forms are the ancestors of the more advanced stegosaurs and ankylosaurs, or if they represent transitional forms between stegosaurs and ankylosaurs. A lot of really weird stuff was going on with the armored dinosaurs, and every single specimen found helps to better round out what they were doing throughout two-thirds of the Mesozoic era. One of the more enigmatic pieces of this armored puzzle was scoured from the reddish rock layers of the Elmers III formation of the Elmers group of rock layers outcropping near Bulafa, south of Bulemane, Fez Meknes, North Morocco. This layer of rock is one of three identically named formations that are part of the bigger identically named group of formations, so Elmers 1, 2, and 3. The Elmers group itself dates to between 168 and 166 million years ago, making it the Bahosian to Calovian ages of the Middle Jurassic Epoch. These rock layers represent what would have been a marine environment, evidenced by marls, gypsums, limestones, and fine sandstones, plus a bunch of marine animal remains. This environmental situation is why fossils from big land animals are rare and very fragmentary. Oddly enough, no large marine reptiles have yet been pulled from these rock layers. At some point prior to 2019, the remains of an armored dinosaur were uncovered from the Elmers III formation. Three neck bones, a backbone, and a left humerus. Whoever first found these bones, excavated them, prepared them, brought them back to their business, further prepared them, and then sold them. Someone within the London Natural History Museum circle notified their paleontology team of the specimens and helped arrange for the team to purchase them. The museum's team found two contacts in Morocco that helped pinpoint where the fossils were probably found and from which layer of rock they came from. And then the London Museum even sent out a team of paleontologists, led by Susanna Maidment, to do some fieldwork in the area. This fieldwork started before the publication of the armored dinosaur specimen I'm covering right now, but it ended up including it as well as the world's most bizarre dinosaur rib, Spicomelis. The semi-recent weirdest stegosaur, Thyreosaurus, as well as a bunch of fossil dinosaur footprints. The vertebrae and leg bone were finally published in 2019 by Susanna Maidment, Thomas Raven, Driss Rache, and Paul Barrett in the journal Gondwana Research as Adraticlet bulafa. The genus name means mountain lizard and originates from the Berber words Adrar for mountain and Ticlet for lizard. Meanwhile, the species name simply refers to the area. With so little fossils preserved with the specimen, not much can be confidently said of the animal's appearance, but enough diagnostic features were recorded on these fossils for the author team to be able to determine what type of armored dinosaur it was and where it might place on a family tree, thus making a hypothetical reconstruction of the animal technically possible. To start, let's look at the two main features the authors used to justify the name and identification of these specimens as a new animal. Most vertebrate animals have similar vertebrae. It's kinda in the name. There is the centrum. This is the rounded, disc-like thing that is the bottom part of the vertebra. 
Then there is the top part, called the neural arch. I have to speak in generalities here because there are a lot of animals that have evolved vertebrae of wildly different proportions for all sorts of reasons. There are often also bits that stick out to the sides of the neural arch called transverse processes. Let's take a look at the top part, the neural arch of Adraticlet. Most neural arches have two prongs that jut out from the front and the back. The front ones are called postzygapophyses, and they bend downward to lock into the prong of bone that juts out of the back of the vertebra in front of it. These backwards projecting knobs of bone are called prezygapophyses. Anyway, according to the paper's text, in Adraticlet, there is a small triangular rough protrusion on the top of the backwards pointing knobs. There are also some weird rough surfaces of the bone along these ridges on the front and back of the sides of the neural arch. Both of these features are not seen in any other dinosaur. Once these features, plus those seen in the humerus, were turned into data and put into the phylogenetic software of the author's choice, they found that Audrey Ticklet placed most closely to the English the Centris and Portuguese Miragaya within the Da Centurine subfamily. The discovery of the super bizarre Thyreosaurus rearranged this grouping just a little bit, finding that Adracticlet is the closest cousin to a group that includes the Centris and Thyreosaurus. This assessment kicked out the Portuguese Miragaya into the Stegosaurine subfamily. However, this area of the Stegosaur tree is very contentious at the moment and requires more research for more steady organizations to be found. Regardless of whether Decentris or Miragaya are the better known cousins to Adraticlet and Thyreosaurus, they can be used to fill in the huge missing pieces of the latter two. This is because both Decentris and Miragaya have enough fossil remains preserved to infer that they were very weird stegosaurs with awfully long skinny necks, tall limbs, tall backs, and spiny plates over much of their bodies that transitioned into thinner and thinner spines along the tail. This sort of body plan is seen across this part of the stegosaur tree, so it would be conservative to assume the same for Adraticlet, even though none of its armor was found. Before I move on to the environment of Adraticlet, let's bring in Mr. Man from Animal Planet's The Most Extreme to get an idea of how big this animal may have been. Based on the very limited data available, some paleoartists and researchers have estimated the animal to have been around 7 meters or 23 feet in length. This is extremely tentative and more than likely inaccurate, but is a good generalized estimation based on the size of the humerus and comparisons with other better known stegosaurs. Thanks Mr. Man. I said before that the Elmers group was marine during the Jurassic period. This is why the remains of land animals are very rare, and those that are found are piecemeal. The land animals here make their way out to sea after they die. Their bodies decay and build up gases inside them, making them buoyant and even better at making their way even further out to sea. This process is called bloat and float. Eventually they pop, get filled with seawater, and sink to the bottom of the ocean to be picked clean by scavengers and or buried by sediments. In some cases, like that of the Canadian notosaur Boreal Apelta, this can result in the best preserved dinosaur specimens ever found. In other cases, too many scavengers get to the body before it hits the silty bottom and gets buried by sediment. They tear the carcass apart, and only a few vertebrae or leg bone becomes part of the fossil record. Based on the fossil record throughout the Elmers group, this area of ocean was full of ostracods, horseshoe crabs, ammonites, bivalves, bony fish, turtles, and the marine croc Steniosaurus. There have been fossil footprints preserved from theropod and sauropod dinosaurs, as well as theropod teeth, sauropod flotsam and jetsam, a complete sauropod skeleton waiting proper revision, and the aforementioned chunk of Thyreosaurus skeleton and Spicomelus ribs and armor. 
It would be cool if one day an entire stegosaur is found in this area and blows open the floodgates yet again on the wild, mysterious world of mid-Jurassic stegosaurs. One can only imagine. For more interesting stories about nature, the history of life, or what goes bump in the night, subscribe, like this video, drop a comment in the comment section below, and hit the bell icon to stay in the know with everything Edge. Thanks for watching.